there's just enough room for a quarter inch ratchet with a 13 mil short socket. And hopefully they didn't over tighten it. And once you get it to a certain point, you should be able to twiddle. See, I can tell my ratchet isn't ratcheting. That means it's finger loose. I'll do this as my last one behind this dog house if you take this off these uh there's some rings in there that'll swell up and you can't put them back and then you'll have to buy new ones so i just use a combo wrench take it out Ugh. hook get this white wire pull it that's the glow plug the socket won't fit it actually crashes into this rocker right here so you have to kind of angle the socket Look how disfigured that, that tip is all consumed. I have a quarter inch ratchet here. It's just tight enough, not too tight. You need to make sure that all these bolts are started by hand before you tighten any down. Otherwise you won't be able to get the tough ones in, which is the back corner over there and then this one that's behind the doghouse. Don't be a jerk and tighten these all down with this you'll be way too tight and it won't seal properly and then the next guy will be mad at you which is probably going to be you just go just go until they're touching and then tighten them by hand you'll thank yourself later
I'm not sure that why this thing was so hard to remove on this truck. I think somebody put something a little different in there when they put it together most recently. It's not usually tight like that. You just want to get these lines out of your way now. These are the heater core lines. You don't want to damage these or have any troubles with them, but they're basically clipped onto those clips that go onto the valve cover, and you can just kind of pull those out of your way. First thing, you got to get the oil tube because it blocks you from taking that nut off. This is a stud type with a nut to hold the oil dipstick on, so you'll need to use a wrench to hold that bolt or that stud when you're taking the nut off. Buddy, buddy, buddy. These ones down at the bottom are hard to get by this air box, this thing. So there's two underneath it. One of them is really hard to get to. It's easier to get from underneath the truck. Right there where that finger is and then right there. Fortunately for me, this one in the back was finger was pretty loose. These feel like they've never been off, to be honest. This one you can drop if you're not careful. Got it. These two that are close to the air intake need to, well, that's the cab air intake. Um, you need to get those with a quarter inch ratchet. Uh, on my other truck, the excursion, you couldn't even get a ratchet in there. We had to take the shroud out and use a combination wrench to get it from below. Just a small difference in engine positioning on that truck. Um, but something to be aware of, just use a small tool, get in there. And I'm actually using two hands in this shot to try to spin that out with one hand on each side and total out the bolt because they're very hard to spin with just one hand. You have to put counter pressure on it to spin it out. You need to go towards the back, down, and then this part goes up like this. See, and then it should just come straight up. There we go. You guys have already seen in the earlier part of the video when I replaced the glow plugs on the driver's side. I just want to give you guys a couple pointers while I'm doing this section of the video. Um, you don't want to put the covers on without starting the engine. If you forget to start the engine, you could run into a problem, which I ran into, which is I accidentally unplugged one of my injectors without realizing it. And so I had an engine code. I was obviously not firing on one injector and the truck was running terrible. So a little voice told me I should start the engine before I put the cover on and I didn't listen to that and then I had to end up taking the cover off again on the passenger side. The other pointer I will give you is make sure that you clean off those bolts as clean as you possibly can. Blow them off, put them on a wire wheel, rinse them with some WD-40, wipe them with a rag, do something because if you get those threads nice and perfect, 
then they'll go in nice and silky smooth and you won't have any troubles tightening them in by hand most of the way. And that really matters on the awkward positions in some of the the bad areas, but you can tell like bad mechanic work when something is getting taken apart and there's a bunch of grit and dirt on the threads. So it's something I realized partway through this job that I've never really been vigilant about, but if I properly clean those bolts, I have a lot easier time putting on the bolts in the awkward positions. The deep end goes down, down past everything, like too far, and then you angle it back. Let's see. Now I'm just angling this back down. I have to get past a couple of wires and then oops, should go pretty close. Oh, there we go. And then that is on just like that. And don't forget your, your studs go here at the top in the middle. Oh yeah, another thing I forgot to mention was that when you reinstall that dipstick tube, you gotta be very careful with that thing, especially if it's old and rusty, because the one I had just got bent, and when I tried to go put the dipstick back into it, it wouldn't go in, and I actually had to replace the dipstick tube. It was only like 50 to $60 from Dorman over at the local O'Reilly's, but still, it's annoying when you have to replace something needlessly like that as a result of being damaged on a job. I didn't even push it over that hard. I've got a bunch of other of these 7.3s and I've never had a problem with a dipstick tube uh, with them as far as it getting corroded and then bending like that and not taking the stick. But just a tip for you, I had a little problem on this truck. This one must have got a little extra rust and uh, a little extra salt on it through the years. Mm -hmm.